Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to Art by Esther A. If you are interested in this envelope design here, you can find it in my channel. It's called Darts, Dots and Dashes, and it's a very beginner-friendly, very easy and simple design for your envelopes and ATC card envelopes. So you can check that out on my channel. But in this video, we'll be doing honeycomb flower. And recently I sent out a pretty large mailing of quilt pieces, which are just slightly larger than ATC size. They're four inches by four inches. And they're really great because the concept is to kind of put them together once you get them all and they form a quilt. And I'll show them to you in a different video if you'd like. It's really cute, really, um, really, really pretty to see everyone's artwork form this entire concept and mine is animals so I am really excited to put all of my quilt pieces together now that they've all come in. One of the envelopes was this flower design here. It's really fun. It's a great little doodle. I did a little different design on each person's envelope because I wanted it to be nice and personal. So I'm really excited to be doing this tutorial for you. I've started here on the corner here. If you're worried about making perfect circles, there's no need to worry. I looked around the house and found a few things that form a nice small circle and I ended up picking a craft paint bottle. You can also use a prescription bottle, the bottom of a can or a cup. There are, are probably quite a few little different things around the house that you can look for to help you form a perfect circle. You want to angle it in, or position it rather in a way that it'll be in the bottom left hand corner of your of your envelope here and then just lightly trace it around as I did. I'm gonna move the bottle out of the way. Before we do any of the detailed design, we're going to outline the flower. And this method is just what's more natural for me um, with my back background being in art when I paint uh, landscape painting especially I work from the back to the front and that's kind of the same you know concept we're using here so we're going to make these really pretty uh, similar to tear shop sh uh, tear drop shapes already uh, on the flowers and it would even look pretty to make them rounded if you want there, there's no rules so for my flower in order to kind of make sure that I didn't lose my spacing I I figured that they would be about an inch long so I start on the left side here and lightly create the flower petal design okay making this one a little bit larger for the video so that it's a little bit easier to see but you can make it any size that you would like okay there's really no wrong way to go about it there's no pressure on these And when you get to the end, you won't have enough space to fit an entire petal. I've made them nice and wide here, about half an inch. So I'm going to start the petal design and let it run off of the page so that it gives the impression that the flower, you know, continues. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And since it's a little bit hard to work backwards, I'm just going to start from the top since that is the only part of the flower that you would see. It's a little 
wonky. Okay. Now, actually, I'm actually going to leave that side there. Okay. In the design, I put half circles in between each petal. Really easy. And they're double lines. So take from left to right half a circle there and then another half a circle right above it. Okay? To form um, another design element of the petal. And as for placement, it isn't in the middle of your petal, more like three quarters of the way up. So there's about a quarter way down. Okay? Is where they go. Last one on this side, and now I'll put a little bit right here, since that would be in between the flower there. And because I want this to not have that gap, I'm going to widen the petal just a little bit. Okay. It'll depend on each of you where it'll fall on the envelope. So just use your judgment on if you'd want to put another petal leaf there, a petal, or leave it the half circle. My earpiece fell out. Forgive me. <laughs> I have a fan on because I'm a bit hot. And the, um, the sound, I didn't want it to be on the video, so I put these headphones in and they just keep on popping out. <laughs> so it's just the joys of recording, I guess. The next stage and the fun, don't have to be perfect stage, is these loops that I put here. They're just linking the half moon or the half circle shapes to each other. And... They are, okay, so they go from half circle to half circle, from here to here, and from here to here, and so forth. So I'm going to start on the left again and make a loop. I hope that you can see that okay. Then what um, what I did is when I re reach over here, I'm going to go backwards so that it won't line up. I don't want to make the pencil line on top of the previous one. I want it to crisscross and kind of uh, go in, in between the lines. So we're going to do that and then one more time. So there's three uh, s loops for each uh, petal. So we'll do it again right here. Go up and then back, off center it or inter uh, intertwine, uh, intermingle, intertwine, intertwine, that's the word. And <laughs> a little bit of fibro brain there. Okay, and another one. And then back. Okay. One more. They look really cute, especially with color on them. Okay. Made a little bit darker so it's easier to see. The last part of the flower will be these little antennas. I don't know what else to call them. I think it, antennas works. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect and you can position them position them 
any which way each one falls spaced differently between one another on each section so I start right here and don't forget that your canvas or your envelope or your drawing it can move with you you don't have to move your body all over the place to try to work on it so I'm going to put one line up like this they're about an inch long I would like them to sometimes one be longer than the other different lengths looks really pretty and then I just put a really small circle at the end of it um, just this little bubble not perfect but really cute and then this one can stick out a little bit more and be like we are not talking to each other so we're just going to give each other some space and then we put these two a little bit closer together because they've made up from their little argument now they're cuddling <laughs> and the last bit here really nice and easy we'll also put the first part where we put the loop have some lines a little antenna coming out of that the antenna are placed in between our loops coming out of the half circle area okay that is the that's it that's the design for the flower really so now here you can really play with the design you can um, put any kind of doodle shapes inside of it that you like or find pleasing there's really no wrong way to go about it I chose a crisscross pattern for the center of the flower so let's see I think it would probably be easier I'm right-handed and for me I think I will start this way you want to choose one direction first I'll do the sideways first kind of eyeballing it and spacing them evenly as close as you can I'd like to take a moment to give a quick shout out to my friends in my uh, support group they're a really great bunch of ladies who also suffer from fibromyalgia and the group centers around positive therapeutic ways in coping with your fibromyalgia and that's um, using painting only mostly and my friend Angela started the group and she's just a really great supportive person who has found a way to help all of us cope and bring us together in finding positive therapeutic outlet and support and laughter so it focuses mainly on those things and it has helped me tremendously and I want to say thank you to everybody for encouraging me in my art journey here we're going now that we've done this direction we're going to turn it around and do the opposite direction and I just again I'm just eyeballing it because it doesn't have to be perfect as a matter of fact I I didn't use a ruler and I just wanted it to look like more natural like in nature where um, it's beautiful and it doesn't have to be exactly the same dimensions um, in between each square so it doesn't have to be perfect those imperfections and in, in nature are what make it so beautiful so now I'm going to start with the lines going in this direction
since it's hard to get to that part, I'll just flip it over. You can use a ruler. There's some um, small sized rulers that come part of a little pencil kit with a compass a con um, contra contractor I think it's called <laughs> and you can use one of those or any ruler to make straight lines if you'd like now that we've done the crosshatch design I'm going to do some uh, I actually don't know the names of these designs. I'm just making something up. So I'm going to make these loops, but they're upside down loops. And they alternate. So the bottom of a loop here will be the beginning of the bottom row of loops. So the middle part will be where I start a loop. And then I start another loop. And the reason why I started in the center and not on the left here is because I wouldn't be able to judge where the other end of my loop would fall. You know, it might not. I might start my loop. And then when I end it, it wouldn't be in the middle of the, the row above. So... If you can see the first loop there, it's a little bit longer than the others. And that's that really is okay. Kind of feel like it adds character to the doodle design. But you can just erase it and, and fix the length. If you want them to all line up. I'm doing the same thing in the next row and finding the middle of the um, the loop above it coming down and then just arching upward down and then up very easy so this design would go on every petal and I'll get started on those now. Now that I've finished the scallop shape, or um, they kind of look like fish scales, you want to put a design in for the half circles. I've gone ahead already and filled those in. Um, they're, all that is is a straight line at an angle. So now we'll go ahead and draw in the leaves. I chose to mark uh, with a pencil line really lightly on the envelope where the addresses will go so that I don't cover that area and it makes it easier to write the addresses and it not be impeded by the design especially for the post office so I'll just put the leaves around that area I've done a couple of them here for expediency and I will show you it's just a tear, tear shaped design so we'll start at this top here bring it down and then start curving it in round it out and then when you bring it up to the top it's a little bit of a half moon shape. Then where the two lines meet, you want to bring a line down and then curve it inward. Just a small, a small curve until it reaches the bottom half here, the half of a circle here. I notch it in like that so it gives it a little bit of a uh, shape. But you can do any kind of leaf that you would like. We're going to change the direction of the envelope for each leaf so that they are going in different directions and you can have them coming off of the page as well. So we'll start again with our leaf design. You want to come
come down and immediately start curving and then make it rounded out, bring it upward and then pulling it in like a little caterpillar, took a bite out of it and then start the stem line, bring it down, curve it down. You want to practice this on drawing paper until you feel more comfortable with it and that's fine too. I've used a fine tipped uh, marker for outlining the flower. I used a bunch of different colors. You can really use any color that you'd like or make it all the same. Just use your imagination. Here I used a blue, orange for the center, pink for the half circles, and since it's a double line, I did one line pink and one line purple. The arches here, I did those in red. The antennas are in purple with the little fuzzy balls at the end in pink. And then I just used a Crayola coloring pencil to color them in. On the blue part, I used two different colors of blue to give it a little bit of dimension. And I'm going to try to show you on the camera can see two shades of blue in there. Make it a little fun. And I think it's probably my favorite part is coloring it in. So have lots of fun with the colors. And I would love to see your finished project if you want to post it to my Facebook page. It's Art by Esther A on Facebook. And I would love to see your finished project the colors you've used, and if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see, please, if you have any questions as well, send me a message on Facebook or here on YouTube. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where it might be a painting or it might be an ATC card or it could be another envelope. See you next time. Bye!